Hey, everybody, welcome back to episode, I think this one's going to be 84, 84 episodes from a guy who didn't even know how to do a podcast or didn't even know what a podcast was until my, my dear friend, Davey Adia, said to me, I'm just going to do this for you and get it up for you because I think you have a lot to say and I think people will be interested. I think you'll get interesting people. And so she helped me and brought me to up to speed. And thank you, hey, Davey Adia, right this minute from every podcast that I do. I bless you. I thank you. I keep you. I love you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on in our world today. Yes. There's a lot going on right now in our world. Uh, who would have known that a pandemic would take the back seat. A, a worldwide pandemic would take the back seat to other news that was coming. Mm. And that being race protests that are happening around race relations in America, but are also spreading around all the country. Mm. In the midst of this, don't forget we are in we are in the throes of a of a of an election year. And we are we are deciding who will run our country for the next year. And there's just so much going on that what would have been the election would have been the mainstay of what of what we would have been talking about right now. But that's like third place news. Nobody's even nobody even cares almost. I mean, everybody cares, but it, there there's so many other issues that are going on. Yes. One of the reasons why I like that perspective is because it allows us to take a look at our life and the things that we think are so important. And it allows us to see that with just a snap of the fingers, something else could come in and it, what we thought was important isn't that important. And something else could come in over that and something else could be important. And it's one of the reasons why I'm really excited. It's sort of a crazy way to introduce my, my beautiful guest that I have today. But I think there's something he's doing that's really interesting that I really want to get involved in with him. He was kind enough to have me on his podcast, which is called A Richer Life. And I felt like I had met a brother from, you know, a thousand years ago. I just, I loved him from the minute I saw him. Uh, I said, hey, by the way, I have a podcast. Will you come on mine? He said, absolutely. I think there was sort of camaraderie in those feelings. We'll find out in this podcast. He might say, I hated you, you know, or whatever, but, but I don't think so. He's, a, he's, he's too, even if he did, he's too generous of spirit to do that. I'll uh, say amen. Amen. Okay. We'll say an amen. Thank you, Rich. So my guest today has had some pivot points. And one of the things that I like to do on this show is talk about pivot points. Because so often we think our life is this. And we get, we get stuck in that life. And we think that's what our life is going to be. Rich Weingart hasn't been stuck in pivot points. And wait till you hear where he is right now. We'll wait till we'll wait for a minute to say that. But let me just give it give his bio. I'm not great at bios. You can see I mess him up all the time. But let me give his bio. And then we'll get him involved. So I'm not just like boring myself with my own conversation. Um, after an early career in finance and a stint with teaching, Rich has spent the last 20 years helping build an insurance brokerage firm, which is still what he does. But in his other life, Rich has spent the last 10 years coaching his kids in various sports and learning as many lessons as he's taught, maybe even more. He loves being a dad, coaching and leading. He's active in his community and values making an impact in other people's lives as he tries to be the best version of himself he can be, while also t taking himself lightly when he knows how. I love that idea of taking himself lightly. I try. I tries. Rich's podcast is called A Richer Life, and it was inspired by a mission of creating a richer life for himself and inspiring, other, inspiring others to do the same. He's excited to explore other people's courageous journeys and help encourage them to dive deep into whatever fear is holding them back and, and, and open up the space for them to go for whatever it is. You can learn more about him and his podcast by going to his website, which is www.createarichyourlife.com. He also has an Instagram, a Facebook, all that stuff will be here. You don't have to write it, write it down. 
When I asked him before the podcast if there was one thing he would want to say to the world, I loved his response. I want to read it to you. His response was, it would be love is the answer to everything. And personal freedom comes with personal responsibility. It is an honor and a privilege, privilege, Rich, to invite you to the Mosaic Podcast. Thank you for being here, my friend. Ah, uh, Danny, thank you. It's great to uh, see your face and uh, reconnect with you. I feel the same, and uh, loved your book, and uh, love it, man. We're in this together, so I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, I love it, and thank you for saying that about my book. I love that you loved it. Uh, yeah. um, Normally, I start out a different way, but there's some things that you've said, even just in what's going on, that I really would like to dive into because sure. I want to make sure people understand them. Tell me what this means. Personal freedom comes with personal responsibility. Oh, man. I think, you know, life is so complex, yet in its essence, it's so simple, right? It comes down to how are we showing up and how are we loving on each other and most importantly, how we love it on ourselves. It's an inside out game, right? And it's not always uh, the easiest thing to wake up and love on ourselves every day. So we have to have tools and strategies to do that and shine our lights to the world. I love the, the comment of put our own oxygen mask on first, which is what we're required to do if we're going down in a plane. So when we take care of ourselves, we can take care of other people better. And that's a skill that I've had to learn in my own life. And when I say personal freedom requires personal responsibility, it is such a loaded time right now, right? As you alluded to before, yeah. with it, and it seems like something else is coming around the corner, but that's the way life goes. Um, it's, it's, there's always going to be things that happen to us and around us, but the things with, that matter most, and this is some version of a quote, are the things that happen within us. And when I say personal freedom, requires personal responsibility, you know, what's going on with the whole um, George Floyd thing and the, and racism in America and Black Lives Matter. I, first of all, I want to say, before I say my, my, what I mean by that is what happened was such a tragedy, mm -hmm. right? And what African American people have, have experienced over a 400 year period. And I'm just naive. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I, I try. I learn. I study. I keep an open mind. And I like to think that I'm not racist at all. But and I have African American friends. And but you know, we, this is a, a good time for all of us to open our eyes and love deeper and learn more and understand that when I say so, I want to make sure that that message gets out first that what happened was a tragic murder. Yeah. Right. And George Floyd's life was taken away from him and he was an African-American man and African-American people have been, you know, I w white people will never understand their history. Yeah. Uh, but all of us are, when I say all of us are responsible for, you know, our personal freedom and our response is our responsibility, really our actions, we need to be accountable for. So just like the police officers, hopefully we'll be, you know, you know, taken to, taken to the law and in the way that they should. And as much as there can be reform in the police department and get the you know, bad cops off the street um, and everybody's reaction to this, right? Again, white people won't know how African-American people feel or have felt for a long period of time, but to move through it and to live in a better state in the world and create more love amongst us, we need to take accountability for our actions. And when I say that, I mean, w this whole onion needs to be unpeeled. Yeah. And the rawest part is what happened. And the reaction is raw and it's real and it's angry um, in some cases, right? But how do we get to the other side of that? Yeah. Is the world a better place now than it used to be? right is there less is there actually less of this happening but the media is so yeah. like throws this out there it's just all like they're they're feeding on the bad news yeah and i'm inspired by the love behind it yeah. right and by, when i say we're responsible for our response 
it's, you know, the, the police officers that did that are going to be dealt with. Reform will happen in the police departments. But, and what happened was tragic and there's racism. And so while I understand the response, I don't understand a reaction that's not going to take us to a higher level of thinking and greater love and compassion for each other. Yeah. And by that, I mean the looting and the stealing and, and the destruction, right? Yeah. We're, I, I, I would like to think that as humanity grows, we're in the business of expansion and growth and deeper love. Easier said than done, but how do we get there? Yeah. Right? Even, we- even if, as I listen to you speak, and as I listen to you try to sensitively say what you want to say in a way that will not ignite somebody's anger or hostility mm-hmm. or whatever, tell me if I, like I'm straightforward. That's yeah. always been my, that's always been my best thing and my worst thing. But I think what I hear you saying, and please correct me if, if it's not, is white people have to start taking responsibility for the way we've treated people. And it hasn't only been black, it's been brown, it's been uh, Indian, American Indian, it's been white to white, it's been in Nazi Germany, it was white to white, it, you know, we just, we just find these differences. But also black people have to take responsibility for how they treat themselves and they treat each other. I had somebody on my podcast who um, was talking about the abuse that she had and she was in a, she was a black woman in a black family. And she told me that lighter skin blacks are abusive to darker skin blacks. Mm -hmm. That it's not just a white person abuse, that everybody who's lighter treats everybody who's darker worse. Mm -hmm. Because lighter skin people got to be, when they were slaves, if this sounds better, I don't know how, but in her mind, they worked around the house. They got to be closer to the masters. The, uh, the, black, the darker skinned people worked in the fields. They were beaten more, tortured more, done that. The lighter skinned women were raped and savaged, but they were sort of, they, she, she called them nice things. She, would, they, she said they were the concubines of the, of the master, but it's, they were just, you know. But what we have to do is, is instead of, it's so easy to point the finger at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Somebody sent me a Harvard test that I would love to send you and I would love to send anybody who's listening to this podcast so that we could take a look at how we rate in racist and religious beliefs. And there's, there's like eight or 10 different tests. I only did one because I only had time to do it. I'll do all the rest of them. If I were asked about my leaning towards racism, I would say I'm probably one of the least racist people that I know. Mm -hmm. But on this Harvard test, I tested with a high propensity to to want to be with white people rather than dark people. Mm. And it freaked me out because, because there are so many associations that black is bad white is good and when they do these tests where they show a white face and a black and 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 good things and a white face and bad things and a black face and good things and a black face and bad things what how quickly you respond shows what you actually believe yeah and it's fascinating well i mean it's it's such a it's a sweaty palm conversation right and we have to be courageous enough to have these conversations and, and I love it because I think the most important thing, again, is to honor what happened as being so tragic yeah. and honor the history of African-American people and to honor the fact that black lives do matter, right? Yeah. That's the house that's on fire right now. Yeah. What happened and the, and the African-American community, their house is on fire. And so putting that out first, addressing racism, addressing the things that need to be addressed, but also having the courage to as to unpeel that onion and look at the layers that are beneath that and i don't know that i have all the answers but like you said it is you know any any type of racism where you know something that happens to george floyd happens is you know we all have to look in the mirror white people need to understand the history of of african-american you know the past 400 years but not feel guilty about it because we're trying to move forward not stay in the 
stay in the history of what happened, yeah. as are the African American people, right? Yeah. So it's different challenges. But the un when the onion gets deeper, the, when we get to the point where we can unpeel it deeper, we can get to that sense that all lives matter. It doesn't matter what color we are. Yeah. We should have equal rights with women and minorities, and we should all be one, yeah. right? So like you said, there's a lot of, you know, when you get to the, the percentages and what's happening in the African-American community, you know, how I think Black Lives Matter so much that they, that when they kill each other, it should be very alarming as well. Yes. Yeah. Right? And same with white people killing white people. Yeah. When a human being kills another human being, it's tragic. Yeah. So whether it's racist or not, and so I think from a white stand, from a white person's standpoint, how do we help level the playing field? Because it hasn't been level in the past. Just so like turn, so, turn that question around, and now, now, you, you have this beautiful perspective of creating a richer life for everybody. Mm -hmm. Beautiful perspective. So now. I want you to take a shot at answering the question you just asked. Okay. How do you do that? How do we create a richer life? How well, do we create, how do we create a richer life for people who have been abused, who have been beaten, who have been, that could be women by men. It could, I mean, the white man is not, who everybody wants to be mm -hmm. quote unquote has not been a, a archetypal beautiful man. Mm. He's abused he's abused women as black men have abused women. Uh, he has abused people of color. He's abused people of, uh, that don't believe in, in his religion. He's abused, he's come in and taken over lands. How do the people that are on the other side of that, be they women, be they gay, be they straight, be they Republican, be they Democrat, be they color, of a different color, be they, be they of a different, border of a different religion of a different economic level yep how do we piece this thing together so that we have a richer life yeah well first of all in my show a richer life podcast we do a lot of we talk a lot about the nervous system and how our bodies process things and the polyvagal theory and how you know we have certain things trapped in our bodies and traumas so when you allude to I mean, being human, being human, there is trauma involved, right? Some of it's seen trauma, some of it's experienced trauma. And so for people that have had the kind of trauma that you're talking about, which is kind of the big T's, right? The abuse, the molestation, there's so much of it. So much of it. And it's, there's, a, there's a guilt that's felt there too, right? And the first thing I would say to people, and I'm not a doctor or a therapist, is whatever happened isn't your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault, right? Like whatever happens to a human being, especially when we're young kids that are supposed to be designed in love for the first couple of years of our life, it's so critical. And when we're not wired that way and we're mistreated, we have to relearn the skills of safety for our bodies and for our lives. And so when all of those terrible things happen to humans, there's so much guilt involved there too, right? And a, and a break from safety. And so when people can get to the point where they understand it's not their fault and they can express a voice that they were never allowed to say and they can have the courage to walk through the situation that happened to them and, and get that felt sense. It's like the somatic healing work of where do you feel it in your body and to really heal it and to really allow that pain in yeah. and to get to the other side of it once it gets fully processed. And there's great somatic practitioners out there that do this kind of work. I'm not one of them, but I've done a lot of this work. Yeah. And I believe humans just have a lot of work to do. Yeah. And there's so much stuff, there's mistreatment and there's damage to you know, infants, you know, the first couple of years are so important, but as we grow, we need to process the things that happen. And then what I was saying is like, allow yourself space and compassion for, for, for that felt sense of, of what you feel in your body. And then when you feel it, you can heal it. Yeah. Right. Once you allow yourself to feel it, you can heal it. 
and you can process it and get to the other side of thinking it's your fault and realizing that it happened, whatever it is, it happened and it sucks that it happened. Yeah. And it's not your fault, you know? And so does there have to be full on forgiveness or does there just have to be acceptance that it happened? And is, is it going to define me or am I going to define it? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be a generational character that breaks the patterns and does, and does life better? So when I talk about a richer life, I'm talking about just being a little bit better than we were. I'm yeah. talking about humans that are, that are just trying to show up, process their pain in their life, get to the, get to the juice inside of the fruit and love on themselves and love on others. Yeah. I was wondering when I asked you if personal freedom comes with personal responsibility, Yeah. what direction you would go. And I was wondering if you would go in this direction. And so I'm going to lob it over the net to just hear what your thoughts are. Sure. Okay. Hmm. On one level, what's happened to us has happened to us. Mm -hmm. as good or bad as those experiences are, yep. there's nothing that we can do in this moment that erases those experiences or makes them so that they didn't happen. Right. Um, even the most forgiving of people can forgive his perpetrator for doing what they've done, but that doesn't take away what happens. That just makes us feel better in the, resp in, in the place that we're at. Right. Where I where I the lob over the net is that personal freedom comes with personal responsibility to me meant the moment I can allow myself to be free by taking responsibility for not recreating what happened in years ago, in months ago, days ago, minutes ago. When I stop recreating that by living it in this moment as if it's happening and feeding it and giving it more and more and more and more juice, mm -hmm. then there's a chance that I have freedom. Right. Is that coincide with what you're saying or do you, or like what, where are your thoughts on that? You just said it so beautifully because it's true, right? As long as we're hold not holding on to it, it's like the Wayne Dyer used to say, we talked about the wake is just what, what the past energy that that propelled the boat forward yeah right it's not it's not what's moving the boat in its current state it's a trail that's left behind yeah and yeah. in like when i when i say our response to our responsibility i mean like we can heal and it takes so much courage to do that right so people can't feel guilty about feeling the pain and they will and so it's how do you process it? How do you heal it? How do you move to the other side of it where you're responsible for your response, which means we're really responsible for our own lives and the decisions that we make with what happened to us. So one of the beauties, and I bet you see this in the podcast that you have, by the way, his podcast is called A Richer Life. And if you aren't, if you aren't already subscribed to it on Apple Podcasts, please go there right now and subscribe to it. It's A Richer <laughs> Life podcast. Um, but part of the joy that I have in the Mosaic podcast that we continue to do is I have the opportunity to just talk with lots of different people and hear lots of different points of view. And so many times when I'm talking to people that have been abused or people that have been hurt or people that have had, who have pain in their body or pain in their lives, some of them say part of the healing for them has literally been for them to just open up and honestly tell their story. It, did, it didn't even need to go to some healer or spend a lot of money with some in some psychological practice or, or alternative healing practice. Mm -hmm. All that really had to happen for so many people is that when they would open up and get that story out of them, mm -hmm. and if someone would take the time just to listen mm -hmm. to their story and to hear their story, mm -hmm. that it would heal some places in them that they never understood before just by the simple practice of getting it out. Do you find that in the stories that you talk to people about? Have you ever heard that from? Absolutely. From and I've seen it live. I've, I've done a lot of work on this and um, creating safety for each other is so important, right? 
And so in those, in people that are hurt, it's like hurt people, hurt people. There's that saying, and it's so true, right? So until we heal our own stuff, we're going to act out the the exact same way. And so when, when people feel safety, then they can express themselves, but they've had such a disconnection from that safety that they don't feel heard and seen and loved, like you say, and like, like, you're right. So if we can listen with compassion and hold safe space for each other, then you can create an environment that is going to be conducive to real healing happening. Yeah. Which is where so, real courage comes in for people to then unlock what happened and turn the page. Yeah. Out. Look, that's easy for me to say. Yeah, because I every I I think people have, and I say this because I know I do, is you have like the imposter syndrome, right? Like, why do I have? Why should I be talking about this? I wasn't raped. I wasn't abused. So it's always like, well, that didn't happen to me. That didn't happen to me. That didn't happen to me. But I've had my share of definitely road bumps in life. So we have to not judge each other by did that happen or did that not happen, but just know that we're all in this human thing together and we all experience things that do need to be processed. Yeah. I mean, and if you think about it, even in a medical field, most of the doctors that deal with trying to cure cancer haven't had cancer. So it's not like we have to go through everything. The compassion and what we feel drawn to do is what we feel drawn to do. But what really interests me is sort of as we were just talking is that when I asked you if you could say one thing to the world, what we've been focusing on is the second half of that statement. But really now what, what your first half of that statement is, is becomes even more important because personal freedom comes with personal responsibility and the way we get personal freedom and pers- take personal responsibility is when we realize that love is the answer to every single question. Yes. And so when we go and we accuse or we fight or we yell or we, or we, or we put down or we throw things at people or we riot, those aren't really what the protesters are doing. Those are people that have taken, resp- taken the opportunity of using the protests to serve them on their own selves. Those are looters and agitators and all sorts of things. The majority of the protesters have been peaceful protesters. Right. But, but until we take responsibility and love the people we're protesting against by saying to the police, when the protesters can say to the police, these looters and these agitators are, are both of our enemies. Yes. They are trying to take the message of what we're trying to do away and they're trying to hurt you. Let's work together to catch them. Yes. And let's come together and work for a greater good. To me, that's what I was always hoping would happen. And I saw some pictures when that happened. Right. Right. Where people would stop people from looting, where people would stop people. The police were, were surrounded by a group of agitators and the, and the protesters came in and said, not on our watch. You're not going to do that. Get away. Yeah. Right. And so. Um, let me let me segue if I can. Is that okay? Are you absolutely? I, and I let me just say on on that front, it's we we justify our behaviors. Yes. Right. But we know when we're justifying our behaviors that aren't right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we live with the decisions that we make. And as humans, we make some good ones and some bad ones. Yeah. But all of us know the facts of what happened to George Floyd. Top of the top of the list. Horrible. Horrible. Rooting or looting, stealing. That's not right. Horrible. Right? Yeah. White people killing black people. That's not right. Black people killing black people. That's not right. Yeah. Anybody killing anybody. That's not right. So we have to get through this and beyond it to deeper love. Yeah. Deeper compassion and a continued progression. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I'd say it like a continued progression towards one love, women being more more equality with women and men, and more peace and love between blacks, whites, browns, whatever color you are. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Go ahead, pivot. I just want. Okay. No, I, I love that, and, and and so part of the pivot that I really am excited about is 
you know, I had set a date in the sand that May 1st, even despite my pain that's in my body and this old body that can't get around like it used to, I was going out and I was going to go around the country and I was going to sit on street corners and bookstores and go to, go to, uh, government offices and go to schools and, and sit and just listen to people and ask them what they would say if they could say whatever they wanted to say and film it. Mm-hmm. I didn't, and, and then I couldn't do it because COVID-19 came and nobody could be with anybody and we had a social distancing and it just didn't seem the right moment to do it. But you're doing it now. You're out on the road, you're in an RV. You're not doing exactly that, but you're on an RV, you're traveling across the country in a time where most people are, are still pretty isolated. We're coming back a little bit. Yeah. But do you find, because this is what I found when I started and I just want to sort of see what you're finding. The stories were being told, not only through the news, but also through forces that are trying to get us riled up at each other by feeding us on social media belief systems that will make us hate one side or the other. Mm. Those stories are so completely different than the stories I found on the streets Mm -hmm. of common, ordinary people when we just sat together. Yeah. And when people who even looked entirely different, just cared and loved each other, sat with each other, talked easily with each other, didn't fight each other, fed each other, uh, gave, gave shelter to each other, that the world in general is a really good world. The people in this world are a really good people. Yes. And somehow we're led to believe that, that we're in opposition and we're fighting and we hate each other and we're, these people aren't good and these ones that like this guy aren't good and these ones that don't. And, and we're, we're just being fed this by a, by a social media war machine almost. Yes. That is consciously trying to drive votes, that is constantly trying to move initiatives, that is consciously trying to, to make one side feel more powerful than another side. But we have been smurfed. Yes. Right? Are you yes. finding that in the travels that you're doing? Because, because Rich now has taken an RV and is, is in Fort Collins right now. He lives in California and he's traveling across America in an RV with his family. Yes. What are you finding? Yes. I mean, I think like to your point, we all have the, the benefit of having news right at our fingertips with technology. And we have to understand that it's so toxic. Most of it is so toxic. And they're, th- they're throwing things at us that have blood on it. That was part of the reason I started a Richer Life podcast. And part of the reason you wrote the book, The Mosaic. Yeah. Right? We, we're in this game to try to do human better for ourselves and for other people in the world. We don't do that when we absorb toxic stuff that brings us down to a lower vibration of how we can live our life. And so I actually think the news is a good place to start from a standpoint, or maybe not start, but it's one of the top problems. There's so much hatred and division and violence shown and they don't have podcasts like the mosaic or a richer life where they're literally showing beautiful human stories of people that have turned their pain into purpose not i mean it's just when you get fed this and you absorb it it's going to make you agitated and angry and act out right so for that reason i don't pay that much attention to the news and i felt really heavy over the last couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. honestly, like yeah. I've felt so much heaviness because I've, I've paid attention. I've tuned in, I've, you know, participated and it's just there. And then I find some good stories out there too. And yeah. we, you have to search so hard for these good stories. So I would hope that the media would flip a switch, but I would tell people we can't count on that. Yeah, we, well, can, we, we can count on it by tuning into alternative media, which is what podcasts are, which is what Richer Life is, which is what we're doing here on Mosaic. But there are thousands of us that are doing it. Our voices aren't as big quite yet as a, as a, as a TV network or as a, you know, something else. But you know what? The more we are in a time right now where the American people and the world at large is standing up to say what you said a little while ago. We know when something's wrong 
and mm -hmm. we're not going to take it anymore. Yeah, I mean, we can either look at it as the world's with us or the world's against us. The news is going to put the world against us, yeah. right? So you ask the question, what do I feel like when I'm on the road? Well, we've made kind of a journey of taking RV trips as a family. Yeah. So this is our 10th trip and our wow. oldest daughter is heading off to college. Wow. We couldn't fly to visit college because the airlines were shut down. So we're on our final journey. We gave our RV that we had away a couple of years ago. And so now we rented one and we're on our final journey. And, you know, if you get out there in the world, you find most people are loving at the core, right? We're all good humans or yeah. most of us, like we came from love. When we came into this world, we weren't born in hatred. Like if there's one thing, like we were born in the image and likeness of God, whatever you believe God to be, that's that pure love. And then something disconnected that in most human beings' lives. And so it's about honoring that and returning to it, yeah. right? So people are walking, people can be walking around in fear or pain of some kind. So as you so well allude to in the mosaic, how do we hold space for people? Yeah. And just how do we, how are we looking at other people? How are we judging them? Yeah. And it's, so it's just one person at a time. I find most people are good. And I find that when I am in a good state of my mind and I'm treating others with love and respect because I'm treating myself that way, I see the world a lot better. Yeah. When I'm in a state where I'm not like that, which we're all human, so we get dysregulated and we get into like dorsal states where we feel shut down or fight or flight, the sympathetic state, um, that's all like the neuroscience side, then we're not going to be feeling good ourselves. And so what do you do when you don't feel good? You don't see the world as beautiful as it is and you don't treat other people the way that you should when you're in a loving state. Yeah. So that's why it all comes down to trying to do human better together. And it starts from the inside out. And that's not, that's a selfish thing in a lot of people's minds, but it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. To claim your own power and claim your own dominion for that. So I want to ask the listeners as we're talking, are you getting a better understanding of what personal freedom of how personal freedom comes with personal responsibility. Hmm. I mean, almost everything we're talking about right now is coming around to that statement of how do we take personal responsibility for one, the way we show up in our own life, the way we show up in the lives of other people, and how do we find our freedom? Our personal freedom comes when we liberate other people as well, when we liberate ourselves, when we liberate other people, when we're not pulling down bound these chains and these and these and these belief systems that that hold other people down or, or persecute other people or try and control people, but rather we we open the world up so that people are and we give them the personal freedom to take personal responsibility for their lives as well. Hmm. What's, what's one thing that surprised you? You've been on the road now 10 times on this, on this yeah. RV. What's one thing that's surprising you on this trip that you haven't seen any other trip? Is there anything? Oh, I mean, we're in the early stages of this trip. Honestly, we're about a week in. Um, but I would say it's a universal, when you get out on the road and you, you go to the Grand Canyon and you go to... Zion and Bryce and we just went on this beautiful hike in Fort Collins you see how beautiful nature is you just get out there no cell phones where you're you know to take them to take pictures right but you just see how we're a connected piece to all of it I like to think like if the ocean is if, if the ocean is God we represent a cup in that ocean so we're not separated from that we have to see the world as a force that we're connected to and that we're a piece of. And that's what is so amazing to me is like when you get out there, it's such a vast world and we're so, we're so minuscule and in so many ways we're so meaningless, but that's what gives us so much of our power because we're connected to that source and energy that is love and that is God. So as you were speaking, I was thinking, how affected is the Grand Canyon by the race protests? Yeah. Probably not too much, right? No. No. And I, I remember someone saying, well, you know, sometimes I think day just wants to be longer. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I remember my response was night doesn't care. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's time for night to come, night comes and day and day ends. Yeah. It doesn't care that day wants to be longer. And what, what you're saying of getting in harmony and in rhythm with the bigger world around us, rather than the world we created, which is this urbanized sort of citified world that we live in where we have mistreated each other and loved each other and taken care of each other and hurt each other. But you go out and you see there's a natural way of things when you go into nature. Absolutely. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a cleansing of the forest naturally. There's a cleansing of the species naturally that, you know, everything, everything is a food source or to something else. And look at, look at what COVID-19 did for us. Yeah. Right. It's like, are we taking the approach that life happens to us or for us? And what COVID-19 did for humanity is not only did it slow it down, it, it hit the pause button. Yeah. So the roads were less crowded. They weren't even crowded. Cities were empty. And you heard just the sound of silence in nature. Yeah. And it was painful in a lot of ways, but it was also like, maybe this is what we're missing. We've gotten so busy. We're running around like, like mice trying to you know, get everything done in our lives. And we're, 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 we're being more human doings than we are human beings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's that being part that we just have to allow ourselves, right? But we get to it. So it's, we get so caught up in like, for me, like as a father of four, it's like, I got, I got a laundry list of things to get done. Wow. And, wow. but I, I, I'm not going to get it done. Yeah. And so it's really, really, really important. How am I going to show up for myself and my family? And on good days, I know the answer. It's simple. You simplify life. You breathe, you meditate, you slow down, you design the days that you want to have in your life. I design the life that I want. And on the days that I do that, everything's good. Yeah. When my head gets in the way, it's like connecting the gut to the brain and the heart. It's like they say the longest journey in life is the shortest distance. It's from your head to your heart. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's, it doesn't stop. Yeah. This works. So, so for those people who don't feel they have the luxury or don't, haven't even considered the possibility that they can write the book called their own life, that they can create the life that they have, that they can literally create a richer life. Yep. What would you say to them? I would say, what's the other way? What is it? If it's not up to you, who's it up to? And while again, it's like what happened is something that definitely needs to be healed, right? How do we as white privileged people help level the playing field for, to enable, for instance, the African-American society to you know, up-level their game and get more on a more even playing field, right? Yeah. We, we can do things, but it's the personal accountability, personal responsibility. Some people have harder lives than others, but at the end of the day, whether you've had an easy life by nature, even people that have an easy life, they go through pain and suffering just like everybody. So for the people that have a really hard life, who's it up to if it's not up to you? Nobody else is going to do this for us. And so we have to make decisions on how we want to design our life. Harder, harder, much harder for people that don't come from a privileged upbringing. I taught school at, in an all African American community. I was the only white guy there. I've seen it. I understand some of the challenges. I'll never know, but I understand. I've seen that fathers weren't really around. These kids are coming from a tough, tough position. Yeah. Right? Moms are working so hard just to make ends meet a lot of times, and the grandma is the one coming to the parent-child conference. Yeah. I've seen it. But at the end of the day, like we can help in leveling the playing field, but breaking the cycle, whatever the cycle is, if you had an alcoholic fa- you know, father, if you've, if you've had abuse or trauma, at the end of the day, it falls on the individual. And that's, that's a brutal truth. Brutal truth. It's a brutal truth. And I, I say that with so much concern and empathy because 
I get how hard human can be for so many people. Yeah. But that is the truth. Just like how we respond to this, to, to what happened to George Floyd. At the end of the day, we have to be accountable for, for how we're showing up. So I want to just lob something over the net because I agree with everything you said. And I want to see if you agree with this caveat that I'm going to say also. Sure. At the end of the day, we are responsible for how we move forward in our life because we can break the ancestral chain of, of events. If our fathers were abusers and we, and our grandfathers were abusers and their great grandfathers were abusers, we don't have to become an abuser. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of strength, Mm -hmm. but we also don't have to do it alone. We are, when we create the scenario where we realize that we're better together, where we're here for each other, where we can reach out and ask for help, where we can say, can you help me with this? And some people will take advantage of you, but some, so many more will help us. And when we're, we're, what would you say to those people who don't, who are scared to be vulnerable enough to reach out for help because they think vulnerability is weakness. Yeah. What would you say to them? I would say that until you, until I get it right. The, the, the normal thing to do is to repeat patterns that doesn't make us wrong, but it doesn't take away our responsibility. That's why it's so hard to be a transitional character in life and think about how much courage it takes to shift a pattern like alcoholism or abuse or whatever it is. Or racism or whatever it is. Or racism. It's so hard to shift that. But I love seeing like the, I, I saw on Facebook, this one African-American who's like a father of a kid. And the, he said, this is not how we respond when it comes to the looting. He's like, we can't do this. We can't respond this way if we want things to truly change. Yeah. Back to like our response is our responsibility. So It's the easiest thing to do is to repeat the cycle and it makes the most sense. And so I, I, it makes the most sense. That's why humans do what they know. That's why it's so important for us to love on each other. So then when you get that mindset, then it's more about, well, am I going to take accountability for my own life or not? Because if you, if you, if you, if you say, I'm not going to repeat what happened to me, or I want this or this to be different in my life, then you have to dive into accountability. You have to dive into vulnerability. You have to dive into courage. Yeah. And that's difficult. And and it seems like our society has created certain models, whether we agree with those models or not. I was never an alcoholic and I never used AA as, as a way to cure anything because I wasn't there. But we do have structures in place where people that are going through similar things can come together to listen, to hear, to help, to support each other in going through that. And so one of the things that I really love about what you're saying is when we take personal responsibility for not allowing this to continue, inherently what I believe will happen is we will start to feel each other and feel for each other how hard it is for another person to do what we're trying to do. And we will reach out and help that other person. I mean, when, when, when people experience massive traumas or abuse or alcoholism, they are alone. They're so alone that that's what they start hiding behind more and more and more and more. They don't feel supported. They feel afraid and alone and then the then then it just gets worse and worse and it piles on itself yeah. we all, and then when they recover from whatever it is they're going through when they heal they heal because they've allowed themselves to feel it to process it in their bodies and then as you said so beautifully at the end of the day what you're really doing is you're allowing yourself to be supported yeah in life yeah and you are allowing yourself to build a tribe of people around you that are going to understand you, accept you for who you are, and encourage you to do human better, right? Like, do human allow better. yourself to have a tribe. It's everything. Yep. It's scary because you yep. open your soul up. But yep. what's the scarier thing? The scarier thing is feeling so alone that you're repeating destructive behavior and cycles. Yeah. And you're handing it down to the next generation. Right. So let me, 
I, I love you. You know, when we had our last conversation, we could talk all day and I, we yes, can do the yes. same thing again, but I want to honor your time and the honor of the time and the people that are listening. Yes. It's always good talking. I, I want to circle around and I want to ask the last question as the first question. Um, it's just in a slightly different form. Sure. When you look out the window at the world you see, is this the world that you always dreamed that you would hand over to your children and your children's children? I know I've listened to your podcast and it's great, by the way. So, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank and you. your book is awesome too. Thank and you I so that, much. And I know that most people answer this question, no. And I would give you the same answer, but I would also throw a caveat in there is that I do believe that inch by inch we move forward. And I believe that as a human species, we calibrate at a higher level than we used to. Yeah. And I believe that even racism has improved. Yeah. Right. Even though this yeah. time challenges that I believe that we are inching ever so slowly in the right direction. And I think the fact that we can have conversations like this, and I think the fact that people have the courage and the resources and the tools to understand how the nervous system works and how, how we can work through things in our life and become better human beings. And the fact that you have the mosaic podcast and the fact that there's so much positive inspirational stuff out there. Yeah. That gives me a lot of hope. So leaning towards that hope. I'm going to ask you the first same question I asked you first, knowing all that we said that's off the table now. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you would do? you would say to somebody now that they've heard all that we said, because we already talked about the one thing you would say to people, what's the one thing you would say to people now with all that preamble that we've already said mm. that would help them lean into the world that is possible? Wow. I could go so many places with this, but I would say the one thing I'm going to give you two things actually. Okay. I'm going to say, have the courage to improve your own life, knowing how important it is to take care of yourself and heal yourself. And whatever it is that you have to heal, allow yourself the courage and the vulnerability and the strength. That's not weakness. That is full on strength. To, to do human better for yourself. And that's the best thing you can do. It's not selfish because then what happens is you shine your light brighter. We're not here to dim our lights. Yeah. It's what the world can tend to do to us. We're here to shine our lights brighter and inspire other people to do the same. Beautiful. So that's what I would say. Is that one or is that two or is that one and two? That, I, if no, that became that, one. That might've been three or four, but there we go. I, I love it. <laughs> Basically uh, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Look inside. Yeah. Heal, grow, expand and keep doing it. Keep challenging yourself. Right. It's like the, the, the growth happens on the outer edges of the comfort zone. And so that's part of the reason I started my podcast is it's good to be uncomfortable, right? It's good to challenge yourself. It's good to challenge other people. And the yeah. best thing we can do is love on each other. Yeah. For those of you who have not heard Rich's podcast yet, it's called a Richer Life podcast. You can find that everywhere podcasts are available. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on all the other apps that have podcasts. Um, Rich, we're going to have all this in the show notes too, but tell people how they can get a hold of you. I know you're going to start up some coaching pretty soon. I, I would I would invite you to start that sooner than later because you have, <laughs> you have a power in you that the world needs right now. Oh, yeah. um, but if they want to get in touch with you, how would they, how's the best way for them to do that? Uh, thank you, Danny. Well, I would also say like, while I've said all these things, I also want people to know that nobody gets it right all the time. Nobody feels good all the time. Yeah. Learning how to move through when we don't, how do we co how do we, what self-regulation tools do we have to get ourselves back breathing meditation? Right? What are we eating? Our nutrition, like all these things that we can do, realizing that as I'm saying all these things, I've got my struggles and my bad days too. That's part of being human. Yeah. And so it's allowing that to happen and not judging it so much, just saying there it is. 
and letting it pass through. So I just want to make sure I throw that in that nobody's in the game of perfection here. Totally. Totally. We're in the game of progress. So people can find me, my podcast for now. I've got a website, which is createarichyourlife.com. And that tells you a little bit about my story. But I launched my podcast back in October. I've had beautiful guests like Danny on the podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, check that episode out. And um, so you can, uh, it's A Richer Life. That's the name of the pod, podcast, A Richer Life. And you can find it on any platform. But honestly, um, it's been great to be on your show. And I uh, feel, feel part of the best thing for me in doing this is I got way outside of my comfort zone. And that is when you really find out how much you need to try. Yeah. Right? Yes. That, you know, and it doesn't have to be more than one person. It yeah. can be, but one person. That believes in you well brother <laughs> brother i believe in you it didn't feel like you were out of your comfort zone at all you felt like you were right in place <laughs> and let me take a minute and just summarize if i may um i just yeah. want to thank you very much for taking your time um, amongst a trip across america with your family to uh give us an hour of your time and spend it with us i want to thank everybody who listens to the mosaic podcast i can't tell you how much it means to me that you find value in this. And please, if you do find value in it, and, and in this episode in particular, in any episode that you listen to, I want please rate it and review it. Please tell your friends about it. Please spread it. Because as Rich said, the only way, not the only way, I don't want to sound Pentecostal, but one way we can combat the news that we're getting is by offering other sources of news to people, other stories. Of, 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 so a Richer Life podcast would be a fabulous place for people to go. This podcast would be a great place for people to go. Start to listen to things that will grow your mind in a positive direction, that will challenge your mind, that will have you take responsibility for yourself. One of the, one of the beautiful, sweet nuggets that I got from today is how do we do human better? I don't know if that's Rich's slogan or if that's something he heard somewhere else, but I love do human better. And the way it feels to me from this conversation of the way to do human better is to understand that our freedom comes by us taking responsibility for the life we're living. Amen. It's not somebody else's responsibility to make our life better. They have, believe me, they have their hands full trying to make their own life better. <laughs> so if we would all take responsibility for the choices we make, the things we do, the actions we take a part in, the thoughts that we think, the stories that we tell, the behaviors that we pass down to our children and to generations and generations and generations. When we take responsibility for that, the worst thing that we can say is we did, we gave to future generations into this world we live in exactly what we wanted. Even if it's something that you, the people don't think it's good, take responsibility. If that's what you want to give, if you want to, if you want to bring evil or something bad in the world, take responsibility for it. You have every right to live your life however you choose to do it, but take responsibility for it. Yeah. And see if in taking responsibility for the actions you do, does it lead you to a feeling of more freedom? Does it lead you to a feeling of more love? Because the answer, as, as Rich said, the answer to every question is love more. And so does the action you're doing and the responsibility you're taking allow you to love the, more, to love this world more, to love your neighbor more, to love yourself more? And can you take responsibility for those actions? It's not easy. It's actually very, very simple. It just isn't easy. Yes. Sometimes you're just not going to want to do it because you're ashamed or embarrassed or upset or, or how can you do such stupid things? Yeah. And take responsibility for that and love yourself for that too. Because yeah. every one of us, no matter where we are on this chain or of, of growth, have felt exactly that same feeling. And we'll feel that exactly that same feeling. And we'll continue to feel exactly that same feeling because sometimes the things we do are just stupid. We just don't do them intentionally. Yes. So, and I would, like, just, I know you're summarizing and that was beautiful okay. for you to connect with you. And I would say to people out there that whatever, wherever you're at in your life, it makes sense, right? What you went through, 
like why why you're stuck it's like it, it, it all makes sense and you having the courage to heal right whether it's through forgiveness or acceptance whatever it takes to shine the light on the truth of your life so that you can transition inch by inch slowly titrate through it into a different reality for yourself i love the quote on forgiveness of forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heat that has crushed it yeah that i think is elizabeth barrett browning said that i think yeah. and whether whether you believe in forgiveness of what happened or whatever or not the other side is acceptance, right? So accepting something doesn't need, mean you need to like it. And maybe we don't need to forgive what happened to us, but we need to accept that that was in our past and have the courage to work through it to get to a better life for our future. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. We have a lot to think about, which is beautiful. It's exactly why we do this podcast. If it's given you any sort of shift or another perspective than say, thank you, Mosaic Podcast, because the purpose of this podcast is to see the world from a different perspective than you see the world from. And, and so I can't encourage you mo more than to get in touch with Rich, to stay in touch with him, to get involved in his podcast, to listen to it. He's got great guests, myself, not, and not only, I mean, I thank you for including me in that list, but there are lots of great th things that he's, he goes through on it. Um, and he will be starting coaching soon. So stay, <laughs> stay in touch with him. Make sure he has your email. Make sure he knows how to get in touch with you when that happens. At the end of the day, when all of us look at ourselves, the job we have ahead of us is not easy. No. Um, ask for help. There's th all of us want to help all of us. We and, don't need help. and we all need the help. Mm -hmm. So the more we help each other to do what we have to do, the quicker we'll do it, the better we'll do it, the more loving we'll do it. And who knows, we might just make friendships where we never knew we had. And when we have the choice to be right or to be kind, let's choose kind. There you go. Kindness is the way through, right? Right. But for some reason, the ego is so involved in the world right now, and there's so much divisiveness. Yeah. And we need to each individually stop on the politics and all everything. Let's let's move this thing forward. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you, Danny, so much for having me on, man. I love you like a brother. It is such an honor. Same thing, same, same. Again, thank you, Mosaic people. Thank you, Rich. And we will see you next time when the Mosaic podcast launch, launches again. Until that time, stay happy, stay connected, take responsibility, and be well. God bless.